Hello, my friend, and welcome to Wisdom Trek. This is Guthrie Chamberlain, and I'm your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. Thank you for joining us for our seven-day week, seven minutes of wisdom podcast. This is day 354 of our trek. Earlier this month, we began a detailed series, which we originally introduced in January, called Your Life Plan Blueprint. We have synthesized this information into a 100-page manual workbook, which contains all the forms needed to create and maintain your personal life plan. This is our initial release of the manual workbook, and it is available for download at wisdom-trek.com on the left-hand sidebar of any page. Or if you are listening on your smartphone, you can text the word life plan with no spaces to 44222, and your life plan blueprint will be delivered to you in an email. The manual workbook is free during the month of May, so I encourage you to become one of our early adopters so that all the updates will be available to you free also. By the end of 2016, we will have a complete web mobile version available of your life plan blueprint, which you'll be able to complete online. Thank you so much for coming along with me as we trek through each page of your life plan blueprint. If you would like to listen to any of the past episodes, please go to wisdom-trek.com to listen to them and to read the daily journal. You can also subscribe to Wisdom Trek on iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, and Google Play so that each day's trek will be downloaded to you automatically. We are broadcasting from our studios at the Big House in Marietta, Ohio. We are making slow but steady progress on the woodwork in the parlor, so hopefully we'll be able to finish up applying the polyurethane by this weekend. I was also able to get the lawn mowed this week, and it was well past due on that. I'll probably have to mow it again soon, as the grass was so tall it really didn't cut very well. And we continue to enjoy watching our hawks fly back and forth every few minutes with worms and rodents for the chicks. It is amazing the number of blackbirds that pester the hawks during the day. From what I have read, it is either a territorial issue or the smaller birds are after some quick prey that the hawks are gathering. They are persistent, but the hawks are steadfast in feeding their chicks. As a reminder, we are looking at changing the format of Wisdom Trek on June 1st. Please email me at guthrieadventurecg.com or leave me a comment at the bottom of today's journal and let me know if you'd like me to continue Wisdom Trek on a 7-day, 5-day, or 3-days-per-week schedule. Also, let me know if you'd like any changes to the format of our daily trek. And thank you so much in advance for your feedback. But it's now time to get started on the 16th day of your Life Plan Blueprint Workbook. If you've missed any of the previous days in this series, they are available at wisdom-trek.com. On our trek for today, we will continue a deep exploration of each of the phases of the Wesper Framework. Today, we will finish up with the second step as we examine principles 8 through 10 and also stop by four checkpoints that make up the established phase. We are taking several days to hike through each step of creating your life plan, and I would encourage you to trek with me through this process and complete the associated forms that are included in your life plan blueprint workbook. If you are following along on the manual workbook, today let's start exploring on page 34, which covers the principles 8 through 10 of the established phase within your life plan blueprint. You can also view this information on the journal for day 354 on wisdom-trek.com. We will explore the final three principles in order, starting with Principle 8. So Principle 8 is, start with the long-term and then break it down into the short-term. Always start off with your long-term objective goals so that you can have a complete picture at the beginning. This is your overall life plan. Set one seven-year objective goal in each of the seven areas of your life. This will allow you to start with the seven major outcomes that should be in balance with each other, at least as much as humanly possible. From there, break down each of the areas of your life into smaller segments. I recommend establishing an activity goal for each of the seven areas of your life for the end of year one, at the end of each month, each week, and then daily. Two common criteria to consider as you break them down are time and magnitude. As an example, if your goal is to lose 48 pounds by the end of year one, your shorter term goal would be to lose four pounds each month. That's one pound per week. And since one pound equals approximately 3,500 calories, You would need to either eat 500 calories less each day or do additional exercise to burn off 500 calories more per day. This is the simplistic beauty of the Wisdom Trek Your Life Plan Blueprint. Let's move on to principle number nine, which is to set your objective goals as end outcomes and not task. This initially refers to your end outcomes that you want to see, not the tasks that you'll need to complete to get the results that you want. As an example, Your objective goal may be to be debt-free by the end of the seven-year plan. By focusing on this end outcome, you pursue the fastest track to goal achievement. The action steps that are needed to undertake this naturally fall into this picture. You may have to set activity goals in several areas of your life as part of your overall life plan to reach this objective. 
Once again, maintaining the proper focus and balance in your life. Focusing with the end in mind is much more effective because you learn to anticipate and plan for contingencies for a successful goal achievement, rather than being driven by external factors. Instead of placing your control on external factors, you take personal responsibility for the outcome within yourself. And the final principle, number 10, use proper framing. Your purpose in life is a positive one. Your life plan should be structured in a manner to fulfill this positive purpose. Your long-term objective goals should all be set within a positive framework. Your shorter-term activities should always lead you to achieve those positive objectives. No matter what your current status in life is, you can fulfill your God-given purpose to live a rich and satisfying life. We all have so much to be thankful for in our lives, and we should be filled with praise each day. As the Apostle Paul wrote in his letter to the church at Ephesus, chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. As we wrap up the establishment phase of our Westbrook framework, let's review four checkpoints that will help you to succeed in creating your life plan. This information is located on page 35 of your life plan blueprint workbook. Checkpoint number one, write them down. Write down your final objective and activity goals in the seven areas of your life. Follow the example that we explored earlier this week and begin with the end in mind. What is your overall objective goal in each of the seven areas of your life? Then move backwards into the activity goals for one year, one month, one week, and each day. These goals should be placed prominently where you can always refer to them. Within your Life Plan Blueprint Workbook, I have included all the forms that are needed in order to create and maintain your life plan. Checkpoint number two, develop absolute mental clarity of your goal. As you pursue your goals, you need to develop such a clear mental impression of your goals that you'll be able to perceive them with all five of your senses, as if you have already achieved that goal. Visualize how you'll feel in seven years when your objective goals in each of the seven areas of your life are completed. In fact, make it a habit of visualizing the outcomes every day in the morning before you start your day. The clearer your image in your mind, the easier it will be to manifest it into reality. You can also practice this habit for each of the activity goals for each objective goal. This will allow you to ensure that you are always on track. Every goal that you have is always created twice, first in your mind and then into reality. If you are unclear on how your goals look like in your mind, how can you ever expect the physical manifestation of what you really want? For an example, If your goal is to be able to run a marathon by the end of the seven years, close your eyes now and visualize the picture of you crossing the finish line. How do you feel? Excited? Exuberant? Exhausted? Capture that moment in your head and never lose sight of it. As you are increasing your running distance slightly each day, especially on the difficult days, keep this picture in your mind. The level of mental clarity needs to be present and right in your mind throughout the goal achievement process. Because as I said, every goal was always created twice first in your mind, and then into reality. Checkpoint number three, be in constant reminder of them. Post your Wheel of Life diagram in a prominent place with your goals clearly written in each area so that it'll be a constant reminder to you. All the forms that you need are contained within the workbook in order to track and remind you of your yearly, monthly, weekly, and daily activities. Reminding yourself of your goals is extremely important to keep them in top of your mind awareness. It creates the drive and energy to pursue it every day. Always make it a point to review your goal sheet every morning when you wake up. It will move you toward your activities that you need to take on that date and to keep you conscious of what's important and what's not important in achieving your dreams that make up your life plan. And then checkpoint number four, review them periodically. Review your objective and activity goals on a regular basis. You should review your activity goals more often A suggestion is to review your daily goals daily, weekly goals at the end of each week, and monthly goals at the end of each month, and make sure that you remain on track. While your objective one-year and seven-year goals can be reviewed at longer intervals, such as the end of each quarter, since they are less likely to change. So on our trek for today, we have examined principles 8 through 10 of the second step of your WESPER framework, which is establish. We also reviewed the four checkpoints that will help you to stay on course when creating your life plan. Tomorrow we will start with step three of the Westbrook framework, which is strategy. We will explore the three core elements of strategy before embarking on the 10 guidelines for an effective strategy. This information on the core elements is located on pages 36 and 37 of your life plan blueprint workbook and manual. 
If you've not done so already, make sure that you download your Life Plan Blueprint and encourage your family and friends to join us and then come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. Now we'll finish our trek for today. Just as you enjoy these daily doses of wisdom, we ask you to help us to grow Wisdom Trek by sharing it with your family and friends through email, Facebook, Twitter, or in person as you meet with them and invite them to come along with us each day. The journal for today's trek is available at wisdom-trek.com. Thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly, I am your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal each day. As we take this trek together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. This is Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.